Nier 2 is a hard game and you might die once or twice or maybe 50 times and then you wonder, am I doing something wrong here? Well, I don't really know to be honest, it could just mean you need to get good. But of course, that is not the case, so in this video I will explain the mechanics of the game so you know how to best use them, sharing with you how you can effectively level up by showing you how to set up a good build and some overall combat tips and tricks to overcome the enemy encounters. And knowing all this will hopefully let you not die so often during playing. So if that sounds interesting guys, let's get into the video. So quickly before I start, I tried my best to make this guide as clear as possible. So if you didn't understand something or you have something to add, do share this in the comments. I might answer your question or you can help a fellow gamer out, but let's move on. First, let us start off with explaining how the level system works because it affects almost every other mechanic in the game. So we move on from here to the rest of the mechanics. To level up, you will need Amrita. This is the experience currency, what you will gain during playing. You got eight stats you can level up. You can hover over them to see what they're used for. Straightforward, basically. Constitution affects your life, aka HP. It will grant you more resistance to poison and paralyze. But for the extra resistances bonus, what comes with all the stats don't really matter. But I will get back to it why that is when I'm explaining the gear system. And the stat mainly affects the weapon scaling of spears. I will go deeper into the scaling of weapons after I talk about what all the stats do. Because after this, you want to know which weapon you want to be using for your playstyle. Heart increases your key, aka stamina bar. Fire resistance and mainly affects the scaling of swords and bows. Courage increases key recovery speed. Lightning resistance and mainly affects the scaling of tomfas. Stamina affects your life, your maximum equipment weight. I will explain what this means later when we are talking about armor. And it also mainly affects the scaling of axes and hand cannons. Strength is the main stat to unlock the bonuses for heavy armor. But I will go deeper into this after the weapon scaling because then we are talking about which armor is right for your playstyle. This stat also gives you more water resistance and mainly affects the scaling of Udashis. The skill unlocks the bonuses for light armor and mainly affects the scaling of dual swords, hatches and rifles. Dexterity increases your ninjutsu power, capacity and mainly affects the scaling of Kusarigamas. Magic increases your Omyo magic power, capacity and mainly affects the scaling of the switch glaives. So about ninjutsu and Omyo magic, I will cover those when we are going to talk about the skill trees. But now we are going to talk about how to choose your weapons, armor and how these are affected by the stats. So all weapon types have always three stats they can scale with and one of those stats is then the main one like we discussed in the level up. For the choice which weapon is right for you, you should keep in mind that the scaling stats of those weapons also sort of match with the armor you will wear. But of course you can use any weapon you want in the game if you'd like. But doing it like this will enhance your damage and defense power at the same time. So this is overall good. So you can keep leveling up those stats to get the maximum effectiveness of both the weapons and the armor you're using. For example, if you use the Odashi and the Axe, these weapons main stat scale with stamina and strength. So for the armor, you can best use heavy armor because the same stats are needed to unlock the special effects of those armor sets. What you of course want to have because those stats can help you create a better build. But your armor also affects your playstyle because of the equipment weight and the toughness you get from the armor. Equipment weight affects your agility. What this means is that how higher the percentage is, the less effective your dodges are going to be and the increased amount of key usage to perform a dodge and attacks. Where if you got armor what gives you lower equipment weight, it makes your dodge more effective and you will be able to perform more dodges and attacks because they use up less key. Wearing heavy armor gives you more toughness, this means you take less key damage from enemy attacks so this makes blocking attacks more effective when wearing heavy armor. As of where you use light armor, you will have less toughness so you will take a lot more key damage from enemy attacks. And blocking is not really your best option to avoid attacks, that's why when you're using light armor you want to focus on dodging. It is more effective because the armor has lower equipment weight. So to sum it up a little, when you use heavy armor, focus more on blocking and for light armor, Focus on dodging. And you also have a medium armor where this is just a all around mix of both where you excel on blocking and dodging at the same level. Furthermore, besides armor, you will also have accessories. The main purpose of these are to give you more special effects and mostly give you resistant bonuses to elemental attacks and status effects and give you passive bonuses to overall mechanics. Your guardian spirit also comes with special passive bonuses where for some bonuses you will need a minimum points into your stats 
to unlock them. So here you want to choose a guardian spirit, what has passive bonuses that match with your stats in the current builds you are using and which yokai form from the guardian spirit you like to use. But at the start of the game, you don't really have much choice on this, but playing more, you will unlock more guardian spirits. So you can look for one that is fitting for your current build. And later in the game, you will be able to hold two guardian spirits at a time. So you can make use of different forms and more yokai abilities during battle. Talking about yokai forms, you have three different forms. These are the brute, feral and the phantom. So you might think that the brute is focused on strength, feral on skill and the phantom on magic. But this is not the issue at all really, you can choose which one you like, only the guardian spirit really dictates what stats you will need to get the bonuses, so it doesn't matter for which form you like to use. The form you want to use is really self preference, for me it depends on the enemy or boss you face and their use of burst attacks because this is just where the forms are used for the most to counter burst attacks. I find the brute good against enemies with a long wind up burst attack because you will need to connect with them before the burst attack occurs. So if they have a fast burst attack coming they will hit you during the counter of the burst attack and while that is not really a good thing so I do not really like to use brute form myself. The feral form is in my opinion the best overall form to use because you will need to dodge into a burst attack to block it what makes it very easy to block them. And not only to block burst attacks, you can use the dodge also to avoid any other attack what is overall useful. I find the phantom 4 also overall good and it is really good to counter burst attacks what are almost instantly so you can quickly react to them. The ability also blocks normal attacks for you and if you miss the timing on a burst attack it will still block it so you are still safe. But the block still uses up key so blocking when you have a small amount of key left will make you lose your post leaving you open. And the block is also affected by your toughness so blocking while having less toughness is no go because most of the attacks will instantly break your pose. So if you use armor with less toughness the feral form is way better for you. For attacking with the form itself I will go deeper into that when we're talking about the combat tips but to sum it up a little now it doesn't really matter which form is better when you are attacking with it. They are basically the same you can hit an enemy with flashy attacks. The use of soul cores as you may well know they will let you perform a yokai ability where the soul is from. They also come with passive bonuses when you attune them into your guardian spirit so you might look into them which bonus they can give and you find useful. You will able to upgrade these soul cores with identical soul cores of the same yokai up to a rank of 9 to increase the passive bonus values they can give. The soul cores will also give a bonus to your overall attack and defense when you attune them into your guardian spirit what is determined by a multiplier from the guardian spirit so you can choose for a spirit what focuses more on defense rather than attack or the other way around but these boots are minor though from the testing i did at the start of the game but when you're getting up later in the game finding more guardian spirits these benefits will come more into play and they will have different multipliers all unwanted soul cores you don't need can be used to gain a shifting skill point by resting right here you will turn the soul cores into fragments to add to the progression to gain a skill point Doing this will also give you yokai forge materials to forge equipment. Also whenever you pick up soul cores and take them to the shrine you will also add progression to get that shifting skill point. Talking about skill points let me explain how the skill trees work. So you have two general trees these are the samurai and the shifting trees. The samurai tree affects upgrades for the key pulse system what is essential to have this upgraded ASAP when starting the game. Especially the first three skills in each side of the tree. But I will go deeper about the key pull system when we're talking about the combat tips. Further in the skill tree you can upgrade the good overall passive bonuses which you should eventually get while you are upgrading the skill tree some more. The shifting tree focuses more on passive bonuses for yokai abilities and facing the dark realm. So it is really useful to have these bonuses when you're playing through the game. To the side of the main trees are two minor skill trees the ninjutsu and omnio magic trees. These come with the art of the ninja by using items and the omnio magic comes with the use of magic spells from talismans. The skills within these trees can be overall useful even though you're not totally heavy built around these trees. They still come with useful passive bonuses and you will be gaining skill points for them anyway during playing. So you can upgrade the passive bonuses within these trees to get it yourself an advantage. Around these four trees you will get your weapon trees for each different type. So now it is very important to have a good sense of which weapon you want to be using during playing. I would recommend to have like two main weapons because you can only hold up to two anyway. It's also a good pick if these two weapons skill with similar stats so you can maximize those stats to get the most damage output from both weapons. 
Within the game, you can lock new combat moves by defeating enemies. I don't exactly know how this works because I received a new move from the Switchglaive, but the boss I got it from wasn't even using the Switchglaive as a weapon, so it might just all be randomized. How to get the skill points to upgrade your trees goes as followed. You will gain skill points for each tree by increasing its proficiency. So for samurai, you will increase it by just using any weapon. For the shifling tree, you will gain a skill point for it by finding soul fragments gained by soul cores. Using a weapon type will increase its proficiency to get a skill point for that weapon skill tree. And the use of items what involve around ninjutsu and omnio magic will increase the proficiency of those skills. You can check the icon next to the item for what skill it will increase its proficiency. In the status tab, you can see how much you will need to gain the next skill point for all the trees. So now you have an idea how leveling up affects the other mechanics and how they work in general. Now, when you know all this, it will make it a lot easier for you to choose a weapon type, armor type, guardian spirit, and which form you want to be using. So let's say you want a build that focuses on speed and high agility. So the core stat you want to be leveling up is skill for the light armor. So your dodges perform better with less usage of key with your attacks and gain the special effects of the armor at the same time. The weapons that skill best with the skill stat will be dual sword, dual hatches and rifles. So if you pick one up, those weapons will benefit both your attack power and your armor bonus stats at the same time. So you can be more stronger by just leveling up one stat. But this doesn't mean you are stuck with just leveling up one stat. You may also want to level up dexterity to make use of ninjutsu. And by any chance, choose the Kusarigama as your second weapon because it also scales with dexterity. But if you would like to use a specific weapon type you find fancy, like the Udashi, you see which stats it scales with and build up your other weapon choices and armor choices from there. So they also scale with the same stat as the Udashi and that is how you can create an effective build. So in the beginning of the game, it is really useful to focus on leveling up your stats as fast as possible to get ahead of the mission's recommended level. To do this, you want to fully explore the mission's areas, defeating all the enemies and pick up all the stuff you can find in the missions, where you also go through every sub-mission as well to get the extra rewards you can get from it. After the missions, you can check your gear that you found something better than the current equipment you're using and switch them out by the new better equipment. Also keep in mind the familiarity bonus, what gives your weapon more boost to attack and passive stats the more you use the weapon. It can be the case that the weapons you hold are still better than those which you have picked up, but this might be because of the familiarity bonus, so be sure to use your math skills to select a better weapon. So after you updated your gear, there are now three ways to make use of the unwanted items you don't use. Make an offering to gain Amrita from them, sell them to get gold, or disassemble them into forging materials. At the start of the game, I recommend you just offer the items to get quick Amrita to level up. So here you can easily select all the items and lock items you don't want to be offered so they won't be selected. And you will gain Amrita and some other useful items like elixirs. Also, it comes with the Make Offering tab is the Kudama Blessings. Here, they can give you bonuses where they can increase the amount of Amrita you receive, Equipment Drop Rate, Soul Core Drop Rate, Elixir Drop Rate, and Material Drop Rate. So these guys are definitely worth picking up through missions because it will improve the overall passive bonus they can give you, but you are only be able to activate one blessing at a time, where at the start of the game, the Oracle Blessing is the best to gain quick Amrita to level up. Some equipment also have a Kudama sensor special effect on them, what makes finding them very easy through missions because they will be shown on your compass so you don't have to look up a specific guide to find these guys. For the blacksmith, here you can sell your unwanted items or disassemble them to get forging materials. You are also able to buy gear from her with gold, but the gear you can buy isn't really that useful, but check the special find section so often there might be something useful worth buying time to time. For forging equipment, you can create equipment with material. The forging material have rarity to them, just like the equipment. So the more you use high rarity material to forge items, the higher the chances to get higher rarity gear. And that is of course what you want. So if you disassemble your unwanted items to forge materials, go to the forge tool section and see if you can forge the lesser rarity material into higher material. Also keep in mind that you can get the yokai forge materials from soul cores by resting rights. So if you want a specific weapon or armor to create a build with, forging is really useful because each weapon or armor has mostly one fixed passive bonus and you can use that bonus to boost your overall build. 
Some gear also have a set bonus, this means that when you have multiple gear equipped what belongs to a set, you will gain additional passive bonuses and if you can simply forge these items, it is easier to complete that set to gain all the passive bonuses what comes if you wear all the pieces. During the game you will find smithing techs what can be brought to the blacksmith so you are able to forge these items where there could be some useful ones to forge. If you have a weapon or armor you really like using but the level is very low, you can upgrade the gear level by soul matching another weapon of higher level into the one you like to use to upgrade its level but to be honest this isn't really needed at the start of the game, you can use any weapon whatsoever, they are all the same really. And it costs a lot of gold, so you will need to sell a lot of your unwanted items first, what could be better used for getting Amrita and forging materials. You can also just change the look of your gear, so if you wear a current gear set with great passive bonuses, but it looks like shit, you can change the look of your gear to a set what looks cooler. You also can temper your equipment, this means that you can upgrade a special effect from your gear, but it is not really interesting at the start of the game. This is really late game stuff when you play the game on NG+, so I recommend you leave this to the end game, but of course you can use it if you want. Remodel is locked at the start of the game, so you don't really need to know what this does. With every use of the blacksmith you will gain patronage levels, with this you can upgrade the blacksmith, what you of course want to do because it will benefit the overall usefulness of the blacksmith. Now for some slight minor boosts you can receive from completing titles, here you can get points to upgrade overall special effects. These are small but they will eventually add up the more points you get and how further you go into the end game. If there is by any chance you don't like your build anymore and you want to try a different one, you can simply buy a book of reincarnation from the blacksmith and use it to reset your stats but keep in mind the more you buy the book the higher the price will get with every purchase. You'll also be able to reset your skill points if you had a dojo tab to reset your skill points in the skill trees. This is useful if you upgraded the wrong skills. Now we are getting to the point where you have chosen your build with the weapon type you like to use and the armor type you found fitting and which yokai form you like to master. So now we move on to explain the combat system and give you some tips and tricks to win enemy encounters. So for the combat system, your key bar is literally everything in this game for attacking and defense. So you want to master the key pulse system by gaining your lost key bag after attacking so you can keep up your defense or keep attacking. That is why you want to have the first three skills upgraded in each side of the samurai tree because it will give you extra boost performing a key pulse with passive bonuses and be able to activate the key pulse when you're dodging what is really useful. Missing a key pulse, it will surely happen, so keep a look at your key and wait for it to come back up while you keep some distance from your enemies so they won't deplete your key and kill you. All weapons come with three different stances where low stance is used for quick attacks while minimized being open, mid stance is used for balanced attacks and being open is not so heavy and the high stance is for using strong attacks but will leave you wide open while doing these attacks. So how I like to approach enemies in U2 is switching between low and mid stance to get some quick hits in between enemies attacks where they will be open for a short time and then quickly key pulse the key I use for attacking and keep up my defense to be ready for the next attack. How I like to use high stance attacks is when I know the enemy is wide open. This is mostly after you countered a burst attack or the enemy's own stamina bar is depleted so you can just hammer on them and even after they did a grab attack they're mostly more open for attacks. High stance is also really good to break through human enemy guards because those attacks deal the most key damage and the combo won't be stopped if it gets blocked. You will face two main types of enemies, human type and yokai type. Human enemies are mostly the simplest to defeat because when their key is depleted you can mostly just one shot them. Except for human bosses, they manage their key more effective and they're harder to break. For yokai enemies though, it can be a little tricky, yokai have a enemy bar and they have two bars really, when you deplete the first one you will be able to continuously stagger them with your attacks, so you can hammer on them without thinking about defending, but they will eventually regain their amina back. For the second bar, if that one is depleted, the yokai will fall on the ground and you are able to do a grapple attack on them. To deplete the first bar of a yokai, it is easily done by countering a burst attack and if you do deplete the first bar with your burst counter, it will automatically fall on the ground so you are able to do a grapple attack. And if you are fast enough, you can do a grapple attack using the yokai form after the burst attack. Most yokai have a weak spot as well, those are mostly the yellow glowing parts, so if you are able to hit that weak spot, it will do extreme anima damage to both bars. 
This makes it easier to one-shot yokai enemies. Also, your own yokai abilities from soul cores will deal great amount of key damage. So what I like to do is hit the yokai in their weak spot, do a yokai ability so they fall on the ground, and then I do a grapple attack. This will mostly kill them or leave them with very little health left for you to just attack with your high stance moves to kill them. For bosses though, it works a little different. Human bosses can be a pain in the ass because they're really fast with attacking and still put up a great defense when they're blocking, so breaking their key is really hard. But they will also do burst attacks, so focus on them and try to hammer at them to deplete their key and do a grapple attack to do massive damage. To improve the grapple damage even more, you can activate your guardian spirit in front of the key depleted boss and you will automatically do a grapple attack while in your yokai form and after, try to get some good hits in with the form. For yokai bosses, it goes similar as defeating regular yokai. They have two bars and breaking the first bar will let you stagger them with attacks. And if you break the second bar, you are able to do a grapple attack. But for the bosses, if you break the first bar by a burst counter, it doesn't let them fall on the ground. You really need to break that second bar to let them fall on the ground to do a grapple attack. Just before I'm going to go into a really neat combo I like to use for yokai bosses, let me explain the yokai realm and the dark realm first. So yokai realms are these little pools on the ground which decreases your key mobility while standing in them. To get rid of these yokai realms you will purify them with a successful key pulse. You want to focus on purifying these realms because then they won't stop you from regaining key so you can keep up your guard with gaining some anima back if you purify them. And finding with these pools laying around is just really annoying so you want to get rid of them. If you have the first three skills upgraded within the samurai skill tree for each stand side you will be able to gain a passive bonus buff when you purify a yokai realm so it will boost your overall effectiveness during combat. Now to explain the dark realms, these are the grey areas you enter within missions, here your key mobility is decreased and the yokai are much stronger and have some new attacks so keep that in mind. Within these realms your own yokai abilities are much stronger as well so you want to focus on using those more, they will deal more damage and key damage to deplete the yokai's anima bars much faster. Within these dark realms enemies will still create those yokai realm pools, standing in them will stop your key region completely so you want to get rid of them ASAP and doing so within the dark realm will grant you a boost to your key region and gives a lot of anima back to keep performing your own yokai abilities to defeat the enemies much faster here. Also, when you counter a burst attack, within the Dark Realm, it will fill up your anima bar fully, so you can spam those yokai abilities on your enemies. To get rid of the Dark Realm, you have to defeat a specific yokai in the realm to make it disappear. So now back to the boss topic I talked about earlier. For yokai bosses, they will also call upon the Dark Realm during fights. This will also recharge both their anima bars when they do this. During this phase, you want to focus on using your yokai abilities to deplete both anima bars from the boss and try to keep countering burst attacks, they will deplete even more anima from them and it will fill up your full anima bar with a successful burst counter to keep on spamming those yokai abilities to make the boss drop on the ground. So if you manage to make the boss fall on the ground, you are able to do a grapple attack. So if you have your guardian spirit ready, use it now to perform a grapple attack while using your form and get some hits in after while still in the form. During the game you can make great use of items and ranged weapons, so don't hesitate to use your bows, rifles and hand cannons to take out enemies from afar so you won't have to deal with multiple enemies in fights or use them to hit the enemy's weak spot so you can take them down much quicker, it makes the game so much easier. During the fights you can make use of items to quickly take your enemies down like bombs and talismans or buff yourself up, so search up what items do and make use of them to make the game again much easier. And that is why going for a ninjutsu build or omni magic build isn't a bad idea. But guys, that wraps up the guide. I hope it was helpful. If you got questions, be sure to comment down below and I will try to answer them. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to support the channel. But guys, I thank you for watching. Now go get him.